Welcome back to City Line. With me, I have someone that truly I would move heaven and earth to have coffee with. Um, I had the chance to talk with uh, this lovely person. Gosh, it's been almost two years now, I think. Um, and she's back. So please join me in welcoming uh, the Chief Operating Officer of Workforce Central, Deborah Howe. Deborah, welcome back. Oh, thank you so much, Amanda. I am so pleased to be back. And I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about what we're doing in workforce development. So thank you. You're more than welcome. And it's so great that I get 13 minutes of your time because you are such a busy woman. Workforce is in every um, social media platform. I read about them all the time in the News Tribune. There is so much happening. So for folks who don't know what Workforce Central does, what would you say to them, Deborah? Sure. Thank you. Great question. You know, really, Workforce Central is just dedicated to making sure that we uh, develop strategies uh, to connect job seekers and potential pipeline development via training uh, opportunities um, and making sure that we're listening to the business voice. Uh, and, and making sure we lean into that because that's what helps us make the connection to the job seekers. So we're super excited about upskilling the current workforce, uh, making sure job seekers feel incredibly supported, particularly in this uh, moment of recovery. So if you consider the journey we've been on in this pandemic, um, really we've had to lean into how we do business very differently. Uh, and it, it, the, the recovery strategies really need to be predicated on the business voice and our community's voice. You know, each of our Pierce County communities have slightly different personalities. We wanna be authentic about leaning into those voices and what they need. Uh, so we're very committed uh, to that. That also means that we need to align to best practices around solving uh, problems around making sure we have a healthy work environment, a healthy work uh, uh, pipeline. So that means we need to be thoughtful about supporting strategy around childcare, transportation, uh, wage progression. Living wage is so important and we need to have a voice and a role in that. Uh, so all of those types of things that can create challenges for our job seekers and our businesses to be to be thriving uh, moments in our community. So beautifully said. Deborah, I don't think that there is any place that workforce is not the glue that holds our lives together. Um, if we were to look at workforce and all the services that we're gonna get into here, that wrap around from like a 30,000 feet level, it would look like a beautiful glue, like a tapestry and workforce are, is the thread that keeps all of us engaged. So when COVID first hit, and we all had to shelter in place. And as you said, we have the job seeker, then we have the employer. Both of them suffered. How did Workforce Central adjust? Well, I think the first thing we needed to do was really listen to uh, the changing need and voice and, and be in partnership uh, with those voices around resolution. Um, and I can tell you, how job seekers um, are expecting employers to respond to them is very different. Uh, and, you know, I don't say, I can't say quite after the pandemic because I think we're still sort of in it. Um, but the voices have changed around expectations, uh, around what, em what em are expected from employers. Employers' voices have changed about what they need and expect. And what we're trying to do is bridge that gap in communication and alignment uh, so they can hear each other, lean into. That includes our, our brilliant system partners like our colleges who are leaning into how do I develop curriculum differently? How do I do online opportunities? How do I make sure people learn how to be online, you know, to, to do educational pieces? Uh, and how do we as a workforce development community uh, and as an organization as Workforce Central, how do we support that? Uh, so really it's a lot of convening, a lot of uh, restructuring uh, based on those voices uh, in implementation. And I, I want to say to um, not just doing focus groups, but really having intentional conversation and saying, could you help us plan, lift? It's, you know, being in the community in a, in a um, really uh, genuine way and not just okay. let me hear your voice, walk away with your data. Thank you for helping us. Right. This is 
we need to lean into helping you. And how do we do that? And then how would he show you that we're doing that? So that has really been our, um, our lean into as we think about, and we're still strategizing. That isn't gonna go away for quite some time, but we are so very grateful for all of our uh, community support, CBOs, colleges, uh, partnership, moments like this when I get to have with you, you know? So these are the kind of moments that help us strategize brilliantly around how do we make this work better? I love that. Youth is so paramount to the work that is done at Workforce Central. Um, let's talk about how that change, how you've had to, um, I guess, narrate that to our youth because it's hard enough without COVID um, pandemic. I also take a page out of my friend Pam Duncan's book where Black Lives Matter is a pandemic. We are still in the midst of all of that. So how do you reach youth that are trying to get that elusive job after school um, to help out because maybe perhaps the parents' job has been cut back? Yeah, that is a super great question, and we're, we're so excited. Um, first of all, I will say one of our responses, and I'll, I'll have a little bit more, but one of our responses is we've just um, uh, engaged four new young adult providers, and we were very deliberate about making sure they were across the county uh, so that young adults had choice um, in that service. These are folks who have their uh, very deliberate best practice um, and uh, are very, very dedicated to serving a diverse, inclusive group of young adults. So in other words, I want you to meet people who look like you in this professional environment. So that's super exciting. Uh, they will be announced on our website uh, in the very near future. Uh, so, but we're, we're so excited that they have decided to be, uh, to join us in doing this work. Uh, and I would also say the, the other piece of, of this work is we're lifting a brand new internship program called Pierce County Next Gen. You're super excited about this. Ages 16 to 24 can engage in an internship. This is year round, up to $5,000, a stipend as well. So if you complete program, um, lots of network and training, you get to lean into um, an employer or industry of choice so that you can learn about the pathway, get to network, get career coaching um, uh, in addition to, uh, to that. Uh, you also have support from our Workforce Center on 2121 State Street. So that's a place where you can get general, I'll call them general services, but we want to make sure that they're customized. We want to meet our customers where they're standing, our young adults where they're standing. But resume support, interview support, clothing, you know, uh, opportunity. You know, what does it look, what do you need in the place that you're standing in that moment? Training. Uh, is there a particular pathway interest for training? So uh, I think we can meet just about any need, but the one we've been really leaning into, because I think you you said it, uh, Black Lives Matter. Uh, we, want, we, we want to make sure that uh, people get to engage with the professionals who look like them. You know, we were just talking to a, an, art, an architect the other day, and I had never met a black architect. And here, here's this gentleman who says, I think I'll lean into this with you. And I, I'm like, this is so brilliant in so many different ways. So, uh, yeah, we're excited to have folks lean into that. They get on our website at Workforce. Uh, dash central.org. We have a really easy application process for that for the interns, but also very easy application process for the businesses. We really want to hear from you. We have up to 50 businesses engaged. We want more, you know, from Lakewood uh, across the county. We just, we, we want to hear from you and we hope that you'll engage with us in this very, um, I think, prolific and brilliant endeavor to support our young adults in the community. Oh, that was you're making my heart sing um, because, and you're also being so humble because, and that's what workforce does. Um, they work miracles very quietly behind the scenes. Um, I know a lot of your team members and people that you work with and they all, in addition to helping the next gen um, and older with skills that help them um, find a career or renew a job. Um, you also, all of your people are there to help groom the heart too. So when we talk about DEI, that's very, very important because, um, you know, DEI, 
um, needed to really be readdressed in our society, but it happened during COVID. And now as we're starting to come out, we still need to remember we have employers that need the basics. Are you experiencing that also? Yeah, uh, we, we are. And we're trying to, I mean, you, you always have to kind of be in your own house and figure out what you need to know. And so we've leaned quite a bit into that. Uh, and also uh, outward facing with our system partners. And you know our Tamar Jackson and Jeff Wolf who really have leaned yes. into their brilliance on that. I mean, we, we called it outreach, but it was it's outreach with a flavor. And the flavor is all around inclusion, equity, and most importantly, access. Yeah. Uh, and, so, and so we're super excited about that. That's one of our ways of leaning into that work for sure. But for businesses, you know, that's part of our, we hope that'll be part of our service delivery to, to help businesses sort of assess where they're at. Um, that may be a space we will do that and maybe introduce them to other, uh, if they want help, depending on how far they want to get into it. Uh, but I've heard from lots of business partners that they want to be very genuine about this. That's hard work because then you got to look, you got to look inward and you got to be willing to take the feedback as it comes and then willing to implement those changes. And I know one of the things that, uh, that we have talked about a little bit is thinking about your application and your interview process. Uh, do you really need a bachelor's degree for that? And I, I don't want to dishonor people. I have a master's degree and I'm not going to dishonor all the work I did to get that. But if you're going to um, add access and opportunity, uh, are you are you blocking folks uh, opportunity to be in a particular job or industry because you're asking for credentials that really do we really is that you know so we're asking business to be really thoughtful about that think about how they um, how they're doing their interview processing what is that what does that look like and we've had uh, several businesses really respond to say thank you for that voice thank you for kind of walking us through thinking about that differently um, and it broadens their candidate pool because you're missing out on great, great people uh, who have the right attitude, who, who are ready to work, you know. So that has been part of our conversation with business to kind of help them think about that. We have a lunch and learn that we do um, on a fairly regular basis. I'm sorry, I don't have a schedule, but you can we can get it on our website. Um, uh, but that is part of a community endeavor. We invite the community to come and sit in those lunch and learns, and we have some deep conversation about, you know, what we didn't learn in school and, uh, yeah, and and uh, about what it looks like today. And people like me get to talk about lived experience and say, this is real. This this happens, and this is how I have to think about it every day. I don't, I don't think about this every other month because it hits me. I think about this every day because this is how I have to live my life as a brown woman. Uh, so... And we get to hear that from partners in the community and how it impacts. We get to hear from people who don't look like us and what how they're, because we've all been socialized uh, to, to this. So it's been a pretty brilliant conversation. Um, so that's, that's some of the ways that we're leaning into that. I love that. Deborah, as I said when we started, I could speak to you forever because there's so much shared history and uh, shared professional experience between us. I want to say thank you, and it feels like it's not enough. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have watched the work that Workforce has done. Um, I have learned from your people. Um, I have had deep, deep conversations with your team members that have um, set me on a better path as a privileged white woman. And so for all of that, I say thank you so, so very much for helping every single day to make Pierce County a better place to live. You and your team are top drawer, and I want to have you back on very soon. Thank you so much. And I appreciate my brilliant team. So thank you for the shout out. And I'm going to hold you to our coffee date. <laughs> you got it, sister. You got it. We have much more to come on City Line. Don't go away. We'll be right back.